Okay. Uh, in this video, I will talk about the nominal effective exchange rate and real effective exchange rate. And also about what the implications are for measuring the competitiveness of an economy in terms of its external sector. We also talk about how to calculate the nominal effective exchange rate and the real effective exchange rate practically. To start with, uh, uh, let us first define the exchange rate. Exchange rate is simply the price of one currency in terms of another. Or in other words, we, we can simply define it as the rate of exchange between two currencies. The rate of exchange can be expressed in two ways. One way of expressing such exchange rate is uh, simply by, by defining the amount of national currency that can be bought with one unit of foreign currency. So in this example, one US dollar is equivalent to 120 Nepalese rupees. So this, this implies that to, in order to purchase one US dollar, 120 Nepalese rupees is required, or the other way, one, one US dollar can be used to purchase 120 Nepalese rupees. So such exchange rate can be can be expressed in two ways as i told the one the first way is called the textbook definition of exchange rate the textbook definition simply expresses the exchange rate as the ratio of national currency over foreign currency so this is simply in, in our example this is 120 nepalese rupees which is national currency divided by one US dollar, which is foreign currency. So <clears throat> this this ratio, this, this textbook definition of exchange rate shows the, the amount of national currency that can be bought with one unit of foreign currency. So the exchange rate measured this way is also called the direct quote. The example is the one we just talked Few minutes before so one US dollar is equivalent to 120 Nepalese rupees or the exchange rate is 120 per US dollar is the textbook definition where where the amount of national currency that can be purchased with one unit of foreign currency is expressed the other definition is called IMF approach or the empirical definition of exchange rate which is just a way reverse, or just the opposite way of expressing the exchange rate. So here the exchange rate is simply expressed as the ratio of foreign currency divided by national currency. So our example, one US dollar, which is foreign currency divided by 120 Nepalese rupees, which is domestic currency or national currency. So this is equivalent to 0.008 USD. So what this 0.00 shows is that in in order to in order to purchase the US dollar, one unit of Nepalese currency or one Nepalese rupees can buy 0.008 US dollar. So in this way, this exchange rate expresses the amount of foreign currency that can be bought with one unit, one unit of one unit of national currency. Sorry, this is national. One unit of national currency. So this definition simply shows the amount of foreign currency that can be bought with one unit of national currency. So it is often called indirect quote. So the, the, the example we gave is uh, the exchange rate between Nepalese rupees and US dollar. So if we express the exchange rate as foreign currency over national currency, it becomes 0 0.008. So the, the definition uh, or the empirical definition is most often used uh, because uh, as we will just show that uh, interpreting the decline and interpreting the increase in such exchange rate values 
are quite easier if if the exchange rate values for example increases from 0 0.008 to 0 0.009 it will be appreciation of the currency and if it decreases to 0 0.006 it will be depreciation so interpreting the values of the exchange rate will be easier in indirect code so we will use this definition in empirical works so to illustrate this with an example we we take the case of two approaches here uh, in the context of Nepalese rupees and US dollar suppose that one US dollar is equivalent to 120 Nepalese rupees if we express it in direct quote it becomes 0 0.008 suppose that Nepalese currency depreciates or its, its strength weakens and the exchange rate becomes 150 so this is an example of depreciation because the Nepalese currency has become weaker it can be seen from the fact that earlier earlier only 120 rupees was required to buy one US dollar now 150 rupees is required to buy a US dollar so looking at the textbook definition when the value of the exchange rate increases the currency weakens and and when the value of the exchange rate falls from 120 to 100 the currency becomes stronger looking from the textbook definition so when the value of the exchange rate falls from 120 to 100 Nepalese currency becomes stronger it can be seen from the fact that earlier 120 rupees was required to buy one US dollar now only 100 rupees is required to buy one US dollar so working with the textbook definition seems easier but the, the way it just reverse while interpreting the appreciation and depreciation of currency. I mean, when the value of the exchange rate increases, it will be a depreciation. And when the value of the exchange rate falls, it will be an appreciation. So this confusion can be, can be removed when we use the empirical definition. So this must be 0 0.01. So that when the exchange rate is 120, the, the, in, the indirect quote is 0 0.008. Now, if the value of exchange rate changes from 120 to 150, the indirect quote falls from 0 0.008 to 0 0.0067. So the value of the exchange rate has declined, so it will be a depreciation. And in this case, the value has increased from 0 0.008 to 0 0.01. So it will be an appreciation. So when we use this empirical approach to measuring exchange rate, the interpretation of the numbers in terms of depreciation and appreciation will be it will be more easier. Uh, especially in regression analysis, it will be easier uh, when we interpret the coefficients of the exchange rate and increase in the an increase in the variable or an increase in the exchange rate will be an appreciation and a decrease or a decline will be a depreciation now we, we go to the competitiveness aspects of exchange rate since exchange rate uh, expresses the value of one currency in terms of another is it, it can be used as a measure of competitiveness so we, we take an example here, uh, suppose that one unit of some commodity cost one unit of some commodity cost rupees 120 in Nepal. So this means that uh, one US dollar, one US dollar can be used to buy that commodity. One US dollar or 120 Nepalese rupees can be used to buy uh, one dollar. Suppose Nepalese currency depreciates and one, one US dollar equals 200 Nepalese rupees, 200 Nepalese rupees. Now, this, this one dollar can be converted to 200 Nepalese rupees. So this becomes the NPR 200. So this NPR 200 can be now used to buy 
one unit of that commodity for rupees 120 and the foreigner saves rupees 80. So in this case earlier one US dollar is just sufficient to buy that one unit of the commodity after the depreciation after the devaluation one US dollar can be used to buy that commodity and the foreigner is left with a saving of rupees 80. It means that the foreign currency has become stronger and the Nepalese currency has become weaker. Looking at another way, when the currency depreciates, uh, Nepalese commodities are relatively cheaper for the foreigners, just as in the case. Nepalese commodities are cheaper, so foreigners want to buy more of the Nepalese commodity or Nepalese exports will likely to increase. This is looking at another way, another way imports by Nepal will decline because the cost of import in terms of Nepalese rupees will be expensive. So considering the example earlier, suppose that uh, suppose that 120 Nepalese rupees is required to purchase uh, a good equivalent to one dollar from abroad. But now 200 rupees is required. So this means that the cost of the commodity that cost one dollar abroad was earlier 120 rupees in Nepal but now it becomes 200 rupees. So the imported commodities are likely to be expensive so import is likely to decline. So simply the exchange rate the exchange rate can be used to measure whether the export sector is competitive or not. So to do so we use uh, the concepts like nominal exchange rate and real exchange rate. So the main need for distinction between nominal exchange rate and real exchange rate is due to the inflation in domestic economy and abroad. So we continue with the earlier example. We told that one US dollar equals 120 Nepalese rupees, then one US dollar becomes 200. So the purchasing power of one dollar will increase if the cost of a commodity was earlier 120 in Nepal and after the devaluation it remains in 120. So now with one dollar the, the, the foreigner can purchase the commodity at 120 and he can save 80 rupees or he can buy any other commodity with the left 80 rupees. However, assume that with the depreciation, with the devaluation, the price of this commodity has become 200. So in this case, earlier the foreigner can purchase one commodity with one dollar and now he can purchase the same commodity with one dollar and he has no competitive advantage with this devaluation. So whether devaluation will increase the purchasing power for the foreigners will completely depend on whether the inflation rate in Nepal is smaller than the smaller than the importer's country or not. So due to this inflation differentials, we distinguish between real exchange rate and nominal exchange rate. The nominal exchange rate is simply the rate that we can see in the market. This 120 is nominal exchange rate, 200 is nominal exchange rate. But if we adjust this exchange rate with the inflation uh, in Nepal and inflation abroad, we call it real exchange rate. Real exchange rate can be simply measured by nominal exchange rate times price of domestic territory or price level in Nepal divided by price level of So the, this P star is the foreign price level. So this ratio shows three important things. The first one is that 
the real exchange rate the real exchange rate not only depends on nominal exchange rate but also the domestic price level as well as foreign price level so the, the first thing is that real exchange rate not only depends on nominal exchange rate or not only depends on the movements in nominal exchange rate but also on the movement of price level in the domestic economy and price level abroad the second important thing is that if price level in the domestic economy rises faster than the price level in uh, the foreign economy so if the price level rises faster in the domestic economy rer will increase it means that the domestic currency will appreciate or the domestic currency becomes a stronger so consider that consider that the nominal exchange rate is just 120 it hasn't changed the domestic uh, price level cpi index is at 100 whereas the foreign CPI index is also at 100. So in this case, the nominal exchange rate will be equal to real exchange rate because the price level have same. However, consider that, consider that nominal exchange rate is 120, whereas domestic inflation is 10%, foreign inflation is 0%. So in this case, the real exchange rate will increase or the domestic currency appreciates in real sense so it will now be greater than 120 it will be 132 so the domestic currency is now appreciated in real terms so the second most important thing is that if the domestic inflation is greater than foreign inflation if the domestic inflation is greater than foreign inflation the domestic currency appreciates and this case is true just it's in the reverse case also i mean in if the domestic inflation is less than foreign inflation the domestic currency will depreciate in real sense provided that nominal exchange rate is constant so the third important thing is that sometimes sometimes the real exchange rate can be constant even though there are price differentials and there are changes in the nominal exchange rate so I mean to say that if, if, if nominal exchange rate depreciates, if nominal exchange rate depreciates, whereas the domestic inflation, the domestic inflation is greater than foreign inflation. The domestic inflation is greater than foreign inflation. So in this case, this ratio will increase, whereas nominal exchange rate has decreased. So this, these two effects both may cancel each other and the real exchange rate may be constant so it means that even though there are changes in the price level even though there are price differentials between the two countries between the two economies the real exchange rate may not change if there are moments in nominal exchange rate cancelling those changes so this is the case of just Two economies now we will go to the case of the multiple world where where there are many countries many economies many trading partners so in this case the nominal exchange rate the nominal exchange rate is simply the average of the exchange rates with various countries and the real exchange rate is the inflation adjusted exchange rate nominal exchange rate so in case of multiple trading partners the nominal effective exchange rate is simply the weighted average weighted average of the nominal exchange rates suppose that nepal has a trading partner india usa china and others so nepal's nominal exchange rate is simply the the, the average of the exchange rates with its four countries so this this is weighted average uh, the weights are the the trade weights or the exports weight depending on the depending on the choice of the researcher so in this case we have taken the geometric average geometric average of the nominal exchange rate 
So the real exchange rate or the real effective exchange rate is the inflation adjusted nominal exchange rate. So this can be calculated as the domestic price level divided by the geometric average, geometric weighted average of the foreign price levels. So this is the geometric average, geometric weighted average, weighted geometric average. So this is weighted geometric average of P star foreign price levels. So the real the R E E R can also be calculated as simply R E E R equals to the geometric average of the bilateral real exchange rate. So this will be simply the geometric average of bilateral real exchange rate. The weights be given by the export weights or trading weights. So, so this bilateral real exchange rate is simply the exchange rate that we calculated above. This is the real exchange rate between two countries. I mean, this is the nominal exchange rate between two countries adjusted for inflation differentials. So we will we will clarify this uh, calculation of a real exchange rate. So in this example, in this example, uh, we will just calculate the exchange rate between exchange rate or the nominal exchange rate and real exchange rate for Nepal. So for this purpose, uh, we have divided the trading partners of Nepal in just two categories. One is India, which covers almost 65% and the rest of the world. So for adjusting the inflation, we have taken the consumer price indices for Nepal, uh, consumer price index for India, and consumer price index for the rest of the world. So the data is uh, from 1979 to 2019. So the first problem we have to face here is that the consumer price index have different base years. For instance, the base year for the CPI of Nepal is 2015, whereas the base for India is 2010, and the base year for the inflation index for the rest of the world is 1979. So we have taken this data from the CPI index of advanced countries from IMF database. So the first, the first thing we have to do here is to re-index the price indices to a common base year. So we have re-indexed the CPI with the base year 1993. Uh, we have chosen this year because uh, Nepal's exchange rate with India has not been changed from 1993. It has been fixed at 1.6 for 1 INR. So to, to re-index the CPI, we just, we just uh, re-index it by dividing the old index series by the index of the base year. So B21 is the index value of the base year, 1993. So we divide the old index by the index value of the base year. And multiply it by 100. So here also we do the same. We multiply the old index value by the index value of the base year, new base year, and multiply it by 100. So now we have we have re-indexed the CPI to a common base year 1993. So now we move to the exchange rate. This is the exchange rate between Nepal and India, as we talked just before, this is the direct quote, or this is the textbook definition. So the textbook definition of exchange rate with India and for the rest of the world, we use the exchange rate for the US dollar. 
So the first thing we should do here is to convert it to the indirect code or convert it to the IMF definition of exchange rate. So we just do this by uh, taking the reciprocal of these exchange rates. So this becomes 1 divided by 1.45, which is 0 0.69. So for US dollar also, we, we convert it to the indirect code. So after converting this to the indirect code, the next thing we do here is to change or to convert the exchange rate uh, to index. So the purpose of converting the exchange rate to index is simply uh, to make it comparable with the base shear. So we convert the index of the base year to 100 so that we can compare whether the currency has appreciated by 20% or depreciated by 10% or like that. So to convert this exchange rate to an index, we simply just divide the exchange rate, divide the exchange rate with the exchange rate of the base year, the new base year and multiply it by 100. For US dollar also, we divide the uh, exchange rate with US dollar divided by the exchange rate of the base year, which is 1993 and multiply it by 100. So now these are the exchange rate indices, not only exchange rate, but exchange rate indices. So the indices so that uh, from 1993, the exchange rate of India has not changed. It is, uh, it is at 100 still now but for us dollar for for us dollar the the index the index uh, has changed from 100 in 1993 to 43 so it is depreciated uh, by almost 60% almost 60% so after converting the exchange rate to exchange rate index, now we calculate the bilateral real exchange rate index, real exchange rate index with India and with US dollar. So to calculate the real index or bilateral real exchange rate, we can also bilateral real exchange rate index. So we just uh, adjust it by the inflation differential. Remember the formula uh, for the real exchange rate, the formula was nominal exchange rate times domestic price level divided by foreign price level. So for India, what we do is the, the nominal exchange rate index for India times times the domestic price level, which is Nepalese CPI, divided by the foreign price level, which is the CPI of India in this case. So the, the, the bilateral real exchange rate index has been calculated as the nominal index with India times CPI of Nepal divided by CPI of India. The bilateral real exchange rate index with US dollar has been calculated in the similar way. This is simply the bilateral exchange rate index with US dollar times CPI of Nepal divided by CPI of advanced countries. So after calculating the bilateral real exchange index, we now come to calculate the real effective exchange rate and nominal exchange rate. The nominal exchange rate doesn't adjust for inflation. It can be simply calculated as the weighted average of the nominal index, nominal bilateral exchange rate index. So this nominal exchange rate, nominal effective exchange rate has been calculated as the as the weighted average, simply the weighted average of the exchange rate index with India and US dollar. So since this is a geometric weighted average, uh, we have calculated this as the exchange rate of index of India raised by the power 
of the trade share with India times the exchange rate index with US dollar raised to the power of trade share with rest of the world. So this is simply the simply the geometric weighted average without adjusting for inflation. So this is nominal exchange rate, nominal effective exchange rate. Now the real effective exchange rate, which is also called REER, can be calculated as the as the inflation adjusted geometric average. So as we talked earlier, it can be calculated as the geometric average of the bilateral real exchange rate index. Remember that we have already adjusted for inflation while calculating the bilateral real exchange rate index. How we calculate this index is that to calculate the bilateral real exchange rate with India, we just, we just multiply the exchange rate index with India uh, by the ratio of domestic price level over foreign price level. And while calculating the exchange rate index with US dollar, we multiply the exchange rate index uh, by domestic inflation and divide it by foreign inflation. So we have already adjusted for inflation while calculating the real exchange rate index. And we, we, we can calculate the uh, real effective exchange rate by simply the weighted average of real exchange rate indices. So this 133 is the uh, geometric average of this real exchange rate indices, the weights being the trade shares. So now, how to interpret these values? Especially to, to measure the competitiveness of export sector, we use the REER. So if we look Nepalese case and uh, and by taking the base year as 1993 in 1993 the real effective exchange rate index was 100 now the index has increased to 118 so it implies that in in, in real sense in real sense in real sense the exchange rate of Nepal has been appreciated by almost 18% so if exchange rate has appreciated by 18%, Nepalese export sector has lost its competitiveness because appreciation means that Nepalese products are expensive, relatively expensive for foreigners, whereas the foreign products are relatively cheaper for Nepalese. That's why it, it, it may be one of the cause for the expanding trade deficit of Nepal with India and with other countries. So in this way, the real exchange rate index can be used to uh, can be used to measure the ex export competitiveness of a country by just looking at the index of the current year and compare it with the base year. We can uh, we can uh, see the magnitude of the appreciation or the magnitude of the depreciation. So this REER can also be calculated with uh, the formula we explained a few minutes before uh, by simply first calculating the inflation adjustment dividing by dividing the uh, CPI of domestic CPI of domestic country or domestic territory by the geometric average of the foreign price levels and then multiply it with the NEER. So the value will be same whether we calculate the weighted geometric mean of the bilateral real exchange rate indices or we multiply the nominal effective exchange rate by the inflation adjustments, the value will be the same.